another good question a prudent question is one half of wisdom quiet frequently i'll hear the question why does my bible tell me not to live by the sinful nature if the sinful nature is dead in galatians 5 part 16 to 70 of the 1978 new international version for example the apostle paul says so i say live by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature for the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is uh, contrary to the sinful nature they are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want that sounds like the sinful nature is alive and well doesn't it the problem is that the original translator of the NIV made some uh, decision in their translation that have led to a misunderstanding. The old version of the new international version translate the Greek word Sarx into English as sinful nature 23 times. So when you see sinful nature in the old NIV, it's the word Sarx without exception. But the word Sarx means flesh. Paul had wanted to say sinful nature, he would have said that. He didn't. The Bible doesn't tell you not to live by the sinful nature. The Bible tells you not to live according to the flesh, which is a completely different thing. And thankfully, the most recent version of the NIV corrects this. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not great gratify the desires of the flesh for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh they are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law It is living life out of our own resources, our mind, will, emotions, experience, heritage, etc. Instead of relying on the Holy Spirit, it is living independently instead of dependently, relying on the patterns we have perfected over the years that protect us and provide comfort outside of Christ. In other words, living by the flesh is living merely out of our natural physical abilities rather than in Christ. That's the battle. Do we live in our own strength or out of the Christ's strength in us? Jesus, give me the wisdom to recognize my flesh as my fault.
anyone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh. I have more circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee as a for zeal persecuting the church as for righteousness based on the law, faultless. If you have this kind of flesh, it's a very dangerous place to be because you can go long periods of time without walking in the spirit because you are so capable in the flesh. When Paul looked back at this USDA Jewish days, in retrospect he said, but whatever were gains to me, I no consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. Is this your f flavor of flesh? Father, teach me to recognize my flesh flavor and patterns so that I can reject them and live in intimate dependency on your Son. Amen. I am convinced of this. Our world is full of pain right now. It seems like everywhere you look, people are suffering and looking for peace and healing and for love to prevail. In times like this, it can feel hopeless, but believe you and I share a personal conviction. Jesus is the answer. While I am sure you agree, you might have the very same question I have often been asked. How exactly is Jesus the answer to all this? What does that new life has been placed out in my life? Well, the Christian life is marked by the life of Christ in us. We die to ourselves as we live unto Christ. With that in mind, let me share three biblical truths on the, how Jesus is the answer to the brokenness around you. First, Hebrews 13, part 8, tell us, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our Savior does not change. He is constant, dependable, and faithful. Secondly, if that's true, and of course it is, Romans 8, part 9 remind us, you are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. In Christ, we no longer live according to our desire. Instead, we follow the Spirit who lives within us. And thirdly, 2 Corinthians 2 part 14 tells us that God uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere like a sweet perfume. In other words, he lives through us in a way that is so apparent to others, it's like a pleasing aroma. So, if it's true that Jesus doesn't change, that he endeavors every Christian by his spirit, and that he lives through us when we allow him, then here's the answer to how Jesus makes a difference. Your life will look like Jesus and it will change the world around you. When you face temptation, Jesus will empower you to resist as he did. When you are confronted with the spiritual warfare, Christ will give you the strength to persist as he did. When divisive issues arise, he empowers you to 
reunity in the midst of differences just as he did you are changing savior who endeavors and transforms you will live through you if you let him figuring out the flesh your battle part two there is no way to win the war by fighting the wrong battles yesterday we looked at the first kind of flesh that Billy Graham identified the second kind of flesh Billy Graham identifies is homemade vanilla flesh it looks it looks pretty generic because so many of us live with it the Bible says the acts of the flesh are obvious sexual immorality impurity and the butch cherry idolatry and witchcraft hatred discord jealousy fits of rage selfish ambition decisions factions and envy drunkenness orgies and the like homemade vanilla flesh tries really hard to cut out these eggs they win some they lose some i think it could actually be called octopus flavored fish flesh but who is going to admit to being that the octopus has the, this big head and all these arms going out for the sake of analogy let's say that the arms represent the scenes in that list everyone is struggling with one or two of them right so what do you do you choke and you hack and you saw a way at that arm but just when one arm seems served and you start to focus on hacking of another beep the other arm grows back are you so foolish of the beginning by means of the spirit are you not trying to finish you by means of the flesh it's interesting to note that the words human of offer in that in that verse are translated from the greek word sarms Paul is again talking about the flesh. Listen to me brothers and sisters, you don't kill an octopus one ten tackle at a time. You kill it by chopping off its head. The head of the octopus is where is your flesh. That's where sin, the acts of the flesh come from. The way you Overcome those sin strangers is to stop doing things in your own strength. You walk in the spirit, trusting Christ to live through you in all areas. You say it should it sounds so simple. You know at the end of the day it kind of is spirit vanilla flavored flesh is so common. It almost seems right, but take me out of that losing battle. I quit trying to hack up one aspect of my sin in my own strength. I rest in you today. I cease trying on my own. I choose to let you live through me instead. Figuring out the flesh you battle. part 3 one of the mysteries of the gospel tradition is this strange attraction of jesus for the unattractive this strange desire for the undesirable this strange love for unlovely the last flavor of flesh identified by gil gilham is your flesh your flesh is failure flesh those who feel they are out of, out of the, the first three pitches those who compare their performance to others and always come up short 
Sometimes they have blown it so badly that they are pretty sure they are forever a lost course. If they were asked to evaluate their impact for Christ, they would give themselves really low marks or even a big fat zip. Sometimes people with your flesh constantly try to be a better Christian, but no matter how hard they try, it never seems to work. Most of the time, they give up altogether. Yeah, put a big Christian L on their forehead. Losers. Sound like your flavor of flesh. If so, I have just two things to say to you. First, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was wicked by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering, and so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us do not live according to the flesh but according to the spirit and secondly all flesh is yoke you are just fortunate enough to be able to see it for what it is oh jesus thank you for coming thanks thank you for receiving me just the way i am thank you for giving me another option to the flesh thank you for showing the way to live according to 